and the making of stars, times and seasons are very fundamental. In the rising of stars, times and seasons are very vital. And for everything under the sun, there is a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. When a farmer misses his planting season, he has to wait for the next one. Unfortunately, you and I don't have the next one. For it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, judgment. I'll be showing you some very striking things in this one hour. And believe in God that it will help you to pay the required attention on your life. So you don't miss your season. To everything there is a season. And a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up or harvest that which is planted. It's a time to plant. And there's a time for harvest. If you miss the planting time, you have lost your harvest time. You need the understanding of the times to really gain command of your destiny. You need the understanding of the times. Like it was said about the sons of Issachar in First Chronicles chapter 12, the Bible says, these are they that had understanding of the times and their brethren were their command. They had understanding of the times and so they were in command. When you lack understanding of the times, you will plant anyhow and at any time only to discover you have only misinvested your energy because the time for it was gone. So this teaching is to stir up your time consciousness in the pursuit of destiny. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. They had an understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do per time. What Israel ought to do per time. And so they were in charge. They were in command. So I've captioned this teaching, Timely Discovery for Striking Accomplishment. Timely Discovery for Striking Accomplishment. And I want your heart to be open. Because God is visiting you uniquely through this teaching and giving you a sense of responsibility for utmost accomplishment. This is so important. I read for my text chapter 9 of First Corinthians and verse 24 to 26. Timely discovery for striking accomplishment. Chapter 9 and verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Not every runner ends up a prize winner. There is a race set before each of us. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. So wrong that he may obtain. There is a star in each one's destiny seated here. But whether that star is actualized or not is dependent on many factors. Know ye not that 
they that are in a race run all and one receive the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Understand what it means to be a star in your race. <laughs> so run that you may obtain. Now verse 25. And he went on and said, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do this to obtain a corruptible crown, but ye are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, and so fight I, not as one beat in the air. I am certain about my race. That's what Paul was saying. I am not guessing about what I'm doing. I'm definite about my course. I know what I'm here to do. And Paul ended up a prize winner. He said, henceforth I saw a crown lay before me. Amen? <laughs> so he was a prize winner. But let's look at a few things here from the natural perspective. Have you ever met any man which has retired from civil service, for instance, before embarking on professional footballing? That is, he's retired now at the age of 55, and he said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to become a professional footballer. That is past. The season for his stardom in professional football is over. It is impossible for him to be enlisted, talk less of imagine a star. Have you ever met a professor who has just retired from his university and is now out to enlist as a professional athlete to run 100 meters race or run 800 meters race is late. The season for enlistment is past. I'd like you to listen very carefully. Because Paul the Apostle calls it a race. And he also calls it as it were a wrestling. So fight I, not as one bit in the air or boxing. These are not things you can enlist in after certain season in your life. You are no longer eligible for enlistment after a particular season of your life. There is a season for enlistment. When you miss that season, like an old English adage, once an opportunity once lost can never be what? Regained. An enlistment season once lost, can never be regained. Listen to me very carefully. I want to start you from this natural perspective before we go into scriptures. At a particular season in your life, you are no longer considered fit for enlistment in the race. You are no longer considered fit for enlistment in the race of destiny. You just begin to survive. The best you can do is make a living. You can't make an impact. There are multitudes in the world just making a living. There are few making an impact. They are the ones they call stars. This is very important. Almost every celebrity in the race of life got to know where they belong on time. And they stuck there. Almost every celebrity in the race of life knows where they belong on time and they stuck there. They know where they belong and they stuck there. In the field of sports, no one ever gets late, gets up late and become a star. You never find a sports star that got started even at 30. So you can see time is running out, young people. Timely discovery for striking accomplishment. We are in a strange age. We are in the generation of the youths. One of our 
lecturers in Covenant University just returning from the U.S. and went for a conference. I was told, gave his report this last Friday, and the assistant coordinator for United States of America for that program was a 21-year-old. For what? 21 what? 21 years old. The second one on that same team was 23 years old. 23 years old. If you ever make yourself feel that you are a child, you are kidding and you may end up in the kitchen. Nobody will enlist a 40-year-old in a boxing context. They may scatter him. They can't enlist you in a wrestling context. You can only have it as a hobby. You never have it as a profession. Almost every old people who have some level of influence play golf. But when it comes to world championship, it is the young ones who win it. Theirs is for fun. The fun of trekking about and holding a stick. But the professionals got hooked on in their early teens from 13, 14, 15. And by the time they are 19, they are already causing waves in the field. This is so important for you to know that timely discovery is the only security of your stardom. You need a timely discovery, a timely discovery, a timely discovery. You need a timely discovery. Ale to rise, ale to shine. An English adage says, ale to bed, ale to rise. But I say, ale to rise. Ali to shine. John Dell of the Dell Corporation became president of that corporation at the age of 19. At what age? At the age of 19. He now retired at the age of 40, having built that to a fortune that is of his own class. A number of legends in the faith. Men, giants such as Kennedy again, of blessed memory, Aura Roberts, Kenneth Egan, all got on their feet in their teens. 18 and 19. 18 and 19. 18 and 19. Has God changed? Most Africans live to make a living. Very few live to make an impact because they are late risers, if they are risers at all. This is so important. So at the age of 19, they should not be pushing you around. Your colleagues are already presidents of corporations in other parts of the world. At the age of 20, they should not be chasing you around. Where are you? Have you slept? Very shortly in your generation, you will find people, 21, who will be president of nations. That's why your packaging must be visionary. You must have a visionary packaging. Billy Graham began his ministry at 20. Is still there. You are getting too old for a star. Get up on your feet and make your moments count. We are in a race. We are not in a phone. The earlier you enlist in the race, the greater the possibility of your stardom. It's not about hanging around. It's about making life count on a visionary platform. You don't have a spare life. 
strive to make the most of this only life you have. I said some time ago, those who don't have spare tires, they don't drive rough. Anything they see, they dodge it because they don't have a spare tire to change it. You don't have a spare life, so stop driving rough. If this tire punctures, you are grounded. Stop living rough. You don't have a spare life. Stop driving carelessly. You don't have a spare life. A great man of God, Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. He got ordained into ministry at the age of 18. He was an ordained minister for 75 years before he died. He pastored a church for 50 years. He wrote that book which sold 20 million copies. How many copies? 20 million copies. Every star in every generation has been an early riser. Every star in every generation has been an early riser. Jesus from the age of 12. From what age? There are a few people below 12 here. If there is anyone at all, it's not even permitted in the camp. Uh, from the age of 12. Don't you know I must be about my father's business? He was not a playboy. Other children were playing around. Their parents were looking for them for three days. They couldn't find them. When they found him, they found him about his father's business. He was already operating in the consciousness of his mission. At the age of 12, by the age of 30, the king ascended the throne. Can I hear your amen? <laughs> his mandate was delivered to authenticate the mission he was already pursuing. And then his fame erupted. His star shone forth. At the age of 30. Joseph the Great. In Genesis 37 verse 2. At the age of 17. He caught a vision. And he was operating in the consciousness of that vision. So much so that when Potiphar's wife wanted to pull him down. He said no I know where I'm going. The Bible records that it was at the age of 17. That Joseph got his dream. Now you are 19, you have no dream. You are 20, you have no dream. You are 21, you don't even know the meaning of a dream. You don't even know where you are heading for. And by the age of 30, Joseph ascended the throne. He was 30 when he stood before Pharaoh and became the prime minister of the land. Life is not about laughing and yelling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Life is a business. You are either making losses, recording losses, or making profit. If you are older than 12 and you don't still know where you are going, you are not in line with Christ. From the age of 12, he knew his father's business and he was hanging around it. If you are 17 and you still don't have a bearing for your destiny, you are, still, you are already walking behind schedule. You need to wake up. I'm privileged to be in the ministry. I have never seen any late comma in ministry that ends up a star. I've never seen one. And I love biographies a lot. How old was Michael Faraday when he struck the deal? He was a teenager. How old was Benjamin Franklin? He was a teenager. When he was spending his food money to buy books. And by so doing, developing himself until he became a legend. Both of them were printing and apprentices. They were apprentices in the printing shop. Both of them taught themselves how to read and write because one of them had only two years formal education. But with a sense of mission, they gave meaning to their life. You know how many schools you have gone? Most of you are graduates already. These ones didn't go to school, but with a sense of mission, they made their life to count. Michael Faraday, who never went to school, suddenly became the envy of his professor that he was a lab attendant with. He was a laboratory attendant when he emerged a world acclaimed scientist with a sense of mission. I'm happy you are quiet. 
majority of you are already behind schedule. And the reason for this meeting is to dig around you and fertilize your life and let the star in you begin to find expression. But that has to begin with getting your bearings right. Life without a right bearing is a burden. 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 According to scriptures, you are to enlist in the race latest at 20. Latest at what? Your 20s are your last season for enlistment. You may not like this. I, I don't like preaching this to old people because they can get offended. But I can tell you that now because you are still on time. All this, I saw a vision at 50. is a delusion. My Bible said your young men shall what? See visions. Saw a vision. Okay, where is the proof of the vision? They always lack proofs. Except through crooked means looking for how to pretend that it's working. This ministry did not start as a breakaway organization. It started from the scratch. There was no gimmicks about how some fellows can move from one place to our place. No. It was God, you prove this mandate or let it be whatever it is. It's a picture, very simple. You yourself know that at the age of 30, they won't enlist you in professional sports. They want you are late. You are late. Except you are playing. Look, in footballing, you have the under 16. How many understand what I'm talking about? Then you have the under 20. And then you have the under 23. It is those ones who emerge in the mainstream teams that go to Olympic. They have been watching you from under 16. You graduate to under 23, under 20, and you graduate to under 23. Then you enter into mainstream professional footballing. So it's not that you now came to 30 and say, I want to register. I say, why? I say, I've been playing my house. They don't play in your house. You play with your peers there. They can see. Why? There's a season that is already considered late for you to enlist at a, as a star footballer. In boxing, we have featherweight. Everybody say featherweight. Those are feather boxers trying to develop their wings. And then you have lightweight. And then you have what? The heavyweights are the babas of boxing who have graduated from feather to light and then to what? Heavy. You can't say because you are fat in your body, then you are a boxer. They say, uh, have you been boxing? No, 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 but look at me. They say, it's not you now. It is whether you enlisted on time or not. If they box you, your body will break into spare parts. You don't have what it takes. Don't you see those wrestlers when they take them up and bounce them on the floor? Go! And then you'll be wondering, hey, this man, this man, this man. And then he looks up, he looks up. You say, one, two, three. By the time you get to seven, the lion in him just gets up. Because his body has been used to being crushed like that over a long time. It's not in the late age you say you want to crush it. You can't do that. No matter how anointed you are, they won't enlist you. If they enlist you, they only enlist you to bury you. It, it, it's not possible. So this is your season. You must know where you are going now and keep going there. You must know it. You must know where you are going now and keep going there. That is what the truth says. You may not like it, but that's the truth. Numbers chapter 1. Numbers chapter 1. And we'll do some quick joint reading. Leru shara de kali shara blek tene borua leza. Le shi ge bush abuluti sig le riale tu zamaradaye tanga. Every form of carelessness that is designed to trap your destiny and bury your star, I curse them in the name of Jesus. (laughs) 
chapter 1 of the book of Numbers. And I'll just take you through this graphic picture. Verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers according to the number of, their, of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. Now look at verse 20. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. 20 years and upwards. All that were able to go forth to war. 20 years and upward. Now look at verse 22. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them according to the number of their names, by their posts, every male from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go to war. From how many years? Now, so if you go through that 24, 26, 28, just two, two verses, two, two verses, you find them repeating that. Now, in verse 45, so were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel, verse 45, by the house of their fathers, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. So, in Israel, 20 years upward. Is the season of enlistment. So your enlistment must be certified properly in your 20s. If you miss it in the 20s, you may never capture it again. <laughs> and we are citizens of the commonwealth of Israel. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13. We are beneficiaries of the blessings of Abraham. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So it's important for you to know 20 years and upward is your season of enlistment. Say with me, season of enlistment. Season of enlistment. Season of enlistment. Season of enlistment. Of enlistment. That is your season of enlistment. That is your season of enlistment. It was said that Joseph, I mean David, confronted Goliath at the age of 17. And suddenly the woman began to sing. Saul has slain his 1,000 and David is slain his 10,000. He was enlisted in the main front line of Israel. Look at these three pictures like I was trying to mention. Joseph came to the limelight at 30. Genesis 41 verse 46. David became king at 30. 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 4. Jesus' mission erupted at 30. Luke chapter 3 and verse 27. That goes on to validate the season of your positioning, the season of your enlistment, the season of your positioning, the season of your enlistment. This is so vital, this is so important. Watch. Where is your passion? Now, where you are sitting, in case you have not heard anything from God. But as a thing that flows out of you to add values to others. Where is your passion? What are the talents inherent in you? And what is the Spirit of God saying concerning you and His plan and God's plan for your life? He said, I led him about, although he did not know me. So there are certain things inside you that is pointing to God's assignment for your life. All you need to do is, God, what are you saying? And then he positions you and begin to invest your the energy and the strength of your youth in the place where you truly belong. That's where stars arise. There are authors and there are star authors. 
there are pastors and there are star pastors. There are evangelists and there are star evangelists. There are musicians and there are star musicians. You know, the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that also shall he reap. So it is the quality of your investment that determines your height of accomplishment. The quality of your investment is what defines the height of your accomplishment. The quality of your investment. They don't use mouth to do this thing. They invest to accomplish it. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. I got to a convention in Akure yesterday and unfortunately the theme they gave me in the letter was not the theme of the convention. They had changed the theme without letting us know. And when I was getting in there, I saw different things from the one I knew. And I'd already packaged what they wrote me as their theme. Now I got in there and I asked the man of God there and I said, what's happening? What's the theme of this meeting? And he mentioned, I said, that's not what they wrote me. Now, and that was only about 10 minutes more to go up. And I connected. I connected with the theme. Under 10 minutes. And the fire of the Lord began to fall. <laughs> Amen. Macaulay, you were there. The fire of the Lord began to fall from the rich investment of the past years. Now, in 10 minutes, everybody was head on their toes under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Not making noise, but transmitting life. Now, under 10 minutes, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. So the earlier you begin your investment, the richer your future becomes. It's so important. That's why all those who are playing football behind the house today, they are the ones who get to the primary school pitch tomorrow, and from there to their secondary school pitch, and from there to the university pitch in their team, and then from there, it starts to the world. That's how they built up. Jesus got there at 30. Joseph got there at 30. David got there at 30. Whatever we miss as your parents, you will never miss it. Whatever your parents may have missed, you will never miss it in the name of Jesus. You will never miss it in the name of Jesus. You will never miss it in the name of Jesus. You will never miss it in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Between the commitment to dream and actualization of dream in the life of Joseph, it was only 13 years. How many years? 13 years. It was only 13 years. Only 13 years. You know why some are not making impact? They are not fully where they claim to be. They are not fully there. They are there one leg out and one leg in. They are not fully there. They are not fully there. I told a friend of mine many years ago. I said, you know why we are going full time? He said, why? I said, we are going full time so we can go full length. I was say full length. So when I came into ministry, I came into ministry full length. I wasn't just in full time. It was there full. I've been there full length. Full length. Full length. Full length. Today, presidents of nations knock on my door to seek my assistance, to seek my advice, to seek my counsel. I went there full length. I wasn't there to go in and out. I'd never thought of something else since he called me. I had never nurtured an alternative plan. You are either there fully or you are making a fool of yourself. So if you are in academics, just be there full length. And you will make it full scale. You are in ministry, be there full, not just full time, making a fool of yourself, but full length. Giving it all it takes. That my Chinese gymnastic <laughs> says something. Says, when you are training to be a star in gymnastics, you don't have time for any other thing, including yourself. And when I saw her display, I said, 
it took time to get that. These two legs flat with the two hands, like a board. See, I refuse to make a fool of myself. Time must not be allowed to run out on me. I refuse to be a fan. I must be a major player by starting to play on time. By starting to play on time. There is this comedian called Baba Salah. How many of you have heard of his name? Now, he was only 70. Now, I've been hearing of him since I was a boy, growing up child. Now, that means this guy has been on the stage for 50 years. Or more. He was only 72 weeks ago. When I was a little kid, I was hearing his name. He would not have been there for less than 40 years. Wake up, wake up. Don't let anybody make you think you're a child. You're already overgrowing the age of vision. You're already overgrowing the age of correct positioning. Wake up and recover your destiny. Don't watch it robbed. I mean, he said, let there be no fornicator among you or a profane person. Profane means a lawada, a joker, like Esau, who sold his birthright for a muscle of meat. Profane person. Somebody going nowhere. Just talking careless. How are you now? How is today? Eh, I thank God. God will do it. Everything. God will do it. You know we are winners, Abby. God will do it. God will do it. You know our pastor said last Sunday that God will do it. God will do it. Eh? God will do it. You wake up in the morning, don't do nothing. God will do it. You sleep in the night, uh, uh, eyes today, God will do it. Wake up again, don't do nothing. You see, you are undoing yourself and mocking God. He said, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he. If you sow sleeping and waking up, you will reap poverty plenty. You will reap plenty of poverty. Plenty of poverty. At the age of 16, I bought myself the first pair of shoes. I took delight in doing it. We are not from a poor family. Above average family. But I just wanted to take pleasure in how to live by myself. Let's see how it goes. I've never been a, a burden on any mortal man in my lo little life. I love to be a blessing, not a burden. None of you leaving this meeting will ever be a burden the remaining days of your life. <laughs> One of the men here in Lagos wanted to enter into business and there was no capital. So he came into Lagos in those days and began tapping wine, palm wine tapping, and raised 10 pounds from palm wine tapping and began his business empire, and began his business. That business eventually grew to become an empire. Now, he only had the primary school education, but knew where he was going and given him what it takes with the strength of his youth. Not after returning from the civil service, you are not going to business. How do you know how they do it? You can only make a living and you have to be careful not to lose all your livelihood to do what you don't know how to do. Somebody is breaking for this morning. Yeah. I want you to be humbled by the times and seasons that makes a star. The times and seasons that makes a star. I'd like you to be humbled by it. I'd like you to be humbled by it. He said, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. Your days are running. The clock is tickling. It's not waiting for nobody. No one is younger among you than you were last year. Every one of you that came last year, you are one year older this year. You don't say, I'm a youth, I thank God. You are already aging. You are aging. You are aging. You are aging. You are aging. One of our brothers in the faith, it will be 60 tomorrow. And I say, ah, life is moving so fast. So how can this brother be 60 just now? Now he's 60. He's 60. 
And we have to go and celebrate his 60. Bless God, he's lived a great life. 60. Before you know what you are talking about, you're already 40 and you're going 50. And before you know what's happening, you just be wondering, what have, you, what have I done with my life? What is my life worth? Your life will be worth an envy of the world. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen if you believe that. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen if you believe that. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen if you believe that. Yeah. So teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. Psalm 90 and verse 12. Teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. Teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. I've tried this morning to show you a number of things here that will help you become far more responsible than you have ever been in discovering a place for yourself in destiny where God has already ordained for you. You know, one of the benefits of vision is self-discipline. You can't know where you are going and not package yourself to arrive there. That's why when they say your flight is so so time, you are going so so where. I mean, every other thing is under your control to me that time, isn't it? Every other thing, particularly if you are going on, you know, uh, uh, an international flight, and they say the gate will be short at 10. You leave your foot behind to catch up with the flight. I'm saying the flight of destiny is about taking off. And are you still loitering around the street and joking all around and jesting everywhere? And doing nothing to show that you don't want to miss the flight. You can't really have where you are going and not be committed to getting there. Because Joseph could see himself on the throne. He knew that Potiphar's house was only a passage to the palace. He would not be trapped in Potiphar's house. It was only a passage for him to the palace. So he packaged himself dangerously. Not to be trapped in Potiphar's house. He got to the prison. He was a reigning king in his mind. He was in charge of the prisoners. Just like the great man, Nelson Mandela said, many, many years as a child, he sat behind a small Baptist church in South Africa. It was in the heat of apartheid. And he said to himself, someday I will be the president of these people. Someday I'll be the president of these people. What he saw in the prison should kill him, but his vision was alive. There was a time they dug the pit like those appetite people were doing and put him in the pit and covered his body with sand and were urinating on his head. Someday I'll be the president of these people. Vision was living. Even though the body was dying, vision was living. Did he become president or not? You can't have a vision and not have the endurance and not have the discipline to maintain your cause to actualize that vision. Because I already saw a 50,000 seat capacity auditorium. I will not be deceived by 5,000 people gathering. Or now think, oh yeah, we got there. We are not there. Where we are going is still farther than where we are. So let's go. Can I hear your loudest amen? So teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. Seek ye the Lord when he may be found and call upon him when he's near. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Don't let this time run out on you. <laughs> time is running out. Wake up and make your life Count for God and for humanity. Time is running out. So wake up and make your life count for God and for eternity. Time 
is running out. So wake up. Men and women, boys and girls, wake up. Not about what to possess, but about what to impart, what to give, not what to take, what to add, not what to receive. Package your life to benefit the kingdom and humanity. Locate where you belong and begin to live your life. You, nobody will ever need to run after you if you can catch a glimpse of what God has in stock for you. There was nobody to cancel Joseph. His vision was directing his life. His vision was directing his life. That's what he does. It gives you, it imparts to you grace for endurance. It imparts to you grace for focus. I've had so many distractions on my journey, but the vision was stronger than the distractions. The vision was what? Stronger than distractions. The vision was stronger than the distractions. They wanted to make Jesus a king. He fled. That was not his mission. That would hold no attraction to him. His vision was stronger than the side attraction. You must catch it on this mountain. The days are running out. Tomorrow is the main, last main session. On Sunday we have a celebration. Between now and tomorrow is a very serious time for your life. Don't eat away your destiny. Just settle down. A morsel of meat, and then they talk it over. Hey, you see, hey, one doesn't really have to get it at this time. One can get it some other time. Don't worry, Jerry. That is a profane discussion. That is profanity. And the essence is to lead your life towards vanity. It will never succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not succeed to rob you of the, the, the intention of God for this convention in your life. Imagine if all the ones seated here imagine stars. That is too much for Africa. That is too much for Africa. In your various fields that the pastors emerge as star pastors. The evangelists are star evangelists. The industrialists are star industrialists. The musicians are star musicians. The entertainers are star entertainers. Now you see, the academics are star academics. Imagine what that will be to our world. And you will get there. I said, as the Lord, the author of this commission, leave it. You will get there. I'll read this parable and then we close. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And we read the story of a late riser. And the cost of late rising. Sorry, Songs of Solomon, please. Songs of Solomon chapter 5. And verse 2. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefined. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the rain, of the night. And then she answered from within, I have put off my coat. How can I put it on? I've washed my feet. How shall I defy them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowers were moved for him. So I rose up to open to my beloved, and my hands drawed with mire, my fingers with sweet smelling mire upon the handle of the lock. I opened to my beloved, verse 6, but my beloved had withdrawn himself. And was gone. My soul fade when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen that were about the city found me. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. My glory was lifted because I got up late. I lost my star and respect because I got up late. Who is this beloved? 
In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens to me, I will enter into him and I will sup with him. Revelation 3, 20. Now, who is this beloved Jesus? What is he doing? He is coming to deliver the plan of God for you. So if you got up late for that plan, then you have lost the glory. You will not get up late for the plan of God. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? That's why I said, Seek ye the Lord when he may be found, and call upon him when he is near. When the planting season for a crop is gone, it is foolishness to make seedlings available to any farmer. So in a place where the government makes away seedlings or seeds for farmers to plant, and the planting season is gone, and you go to apply for your seed, would they give you any? So when your time, your season of vision is gone, you may have ambition. You may be a victim of delusion. But as far as vision is concerned, the time of it is gone. That season will not run out in your life. How many are set to make an impact? How many want to live beyond just making a living? Can I hear your loudest amen? Amen. This nation has witnessed a number of great footballers like Shegun Odegbami. How many remember him? The world has witnessed such great footballers like Maradona. How many remember him? Is he still on the pitch now? He has passed the age of a major player. He has to withdraw to his shell and at best become a coach. You never find a 70-year-old man in Olympics on your marks. Sir, go! Even if he said he has been anointed to be a star for life, they say, not here, go and be a star in your house. Age has disqualified him. Before you lose your place to age, wake up and take responsibility. Wake up and take responsibility. Wake up! And take responsibility. Can I have you lift up your two hands and pray the hardest you can, both in the spirit and in your understanding, to lay hold on where you belong. Oh, blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. What announces a man is not the organization, it's his contribution. Not every one of you will own a company of your own. The Virgin Empire, the last time I knew, had 20 management tops, each of them flies their own plane in their respective capacities. Microsoft has a man by name Bill Gates, but behind Bill Gates are other gates that makes the Microsoft organization. Each one making his waves by his contributions. Not all of you may open a university but some of you will be professors in federal state and foreign universities now see so each one belongs somewhere to make it the contribution as has been enabled him by God it's not about position it's not about status It's not about possession. Destiny is about fulfillment of mission. Knowing your mission and settling down with it and making it work. Not all of you, for instance, we start ministries. No. Yet, some of you are going to be ministers in existing ministries, in ministries founded by some of you as ordained by God. In his own eternal agenda. What's important is 
to find your mission with God and then take your life to it. It is your contribution that will announce you, not your position or your title. It is your contribution that will give you your place. It is not your possession. Now listen to me. That's why you will pray again. Holy Spirit, deliver me from myself into your plan. I want me to be delivered from myself into your plan. I want to live with your plan till I die. Deliver me from myself into your plan. Come on, pray now. Deliver me from myself into your plan. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Not every star banker is a bank owner. Not every star banker is a bank owner. But there is a place you belong. There is no great industry without great experts within it. And he gave to everyone according to their several ability. You don't determine your ability. It is given you from the factory. A 1.6 car cannot begin to behave like 2.8 capacity. You can't behave like that because that is not your makeup from the factory. Each one has his capacity of God. One after this kind, the other after that kind. So when you go beyond your capacity, you break your back. Lord, help me to live within your ordained capacity for my life. Go ahead and pray. Lord, help me to live within your ordained capacity for my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. How many know there's a difference between musicians and singers? Musicians and singers, you know there's a difference. There are major players of instruments who are not singers at all. How many know that? And so when an instrumentalist wants to pose as a singer, he messes up himself because he has no capacity for that. His mission is to provide music for the singers to sing. Can I hear your amen? And his star is in playing that music, not is singing with, you know, that post voice. Because it's not given. Come on, say it's not given. Oh, you need this. You need this now because we live in a blown head age. I've seen quite a number of people in my short journey who, when you ask them where they want to work, they say, hey, we don't want to work with anybody. And yet, you can't walk by yourself because you don't have it. I know one of them that for 15 years, I can't work with anybody and nothing is working for him up till now. I can't work for anybody. A full-grown graduate can't point to what he does now because his head is bigger than his neck. It's so important in your days. You are going to be a manufacturer of aeroplane tomorrow, but where do you start today? that we graduate into that realm, you must find a starting point and find it now. My prayer is that no one will carry more than his capacity on his head. Yeah. And my prayer is that no one will run another man's race. Yeah. Your friend can be called an evangelist. Maybe you led him to Christ. That does not make you one. How can he say he's evangelist? I was the one who led them to Christ. I'm also evangelist. Thank you, Jesus. And then you go outside and one witch just blows one wind. Because you are not called. You are running another man's race. You are working in a competition, not in a vision. You mustn't miss this for anything in your life. You mustn't miss this for anything in your life. I'll read this scripture. And then we close. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. See that in one minute. 4, 12. Let's read together now. Let 
no man despise thy youth. But in order for them not to despise thy youth, be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. If we must not despise your youth, then live responsibly to make us respect your views. You can't be living an incorrigible life and expect us to respect your vision of being an apostle. We can't. Because your life does not portray what you are claiming to have as a vision. Let no man despise thy youth, but take responsibility to command respect. Take what? Take responsibility to command respect. Let no man despise thy youth, but take responsibility to command respect. And verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortations, and to doctrine. That is, equip yourself to match your task. So I'm asking you, therefore, invest your time, your energy, and resources in reading, studying, enlarging your capacity of information, and in driving the vision. That God has given you. This is so important. Let me run a brief of my life and see what it is like. I'd always carried a strange passion for God. I never knew it was going to be my lifetime assignment. I've told you before I got saved in 1969. I was 15 years old then. Got the privilege of preaching the first message in 1970. And from then I've had all kinds of opportunities in one leadership position or another in the body of Christ. At the age of 19, I was privileged to co-found a church which was my first pastoral experience in 1973. I got to that village for a 71-day walk, vacation time. And I said, is there any church here? They said, no. I said, not even Catholic? They said, no. And I knelt down in my little hut. I said, Lord, may I never leave this village the way I met it. I had no calling to ministry. So we began evangelism, one-on-one -on -one evangelism. I had a friend there who could speak the language of the place. So Abraham and myself now became a team. That's why I say I co-founded a church. Abraham was the interpreter, I was the preacher. And so, people gathered. And in 40 days, we already built a grass church. They were first meeting in our home, and then in 40 days we built a grass church. And by the day I was leaving, they handed over to me a mysterious gift, a lantern. The oldest man in the church presented that lantern. He said, the light you brought to our village, let it shine right on the wall. <laughs> now that was at the age of 19. We handed over that church to the UMCA mission when our time there was over and they took over the church to carry on the assignment. I never knew my passion was only an expression of the plan of God that I had not known. And suddenly the mandate was delivered when I was 27. Now I'm 53. I've not wasted any aspect of my life. My prayer for you is that you get your bearings right on time. Yeah. I began investing in books that I knew consciously from 1974. I'm buying and reading, buying and biting. I was buying and biting the books. God's light was dawning on my heart. I was having series of encounters of all kinds. God was leading the way to go for time. And bless God, there is no regret today. If God has not reserved stars for you, he will not have called you here. The fact that you are called here means you are already enlisted as a star. <laughs> May you locate now where that star is. 
and may you abide there. The Bible says, therefore, let everyone abide in the same calling wherein is called. Let every man abide. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein is called. And for these 26 years, I've not had an alternative plan. Neither have I thought of an alternative thing to do. If your eyes single, your whole body will be full of light. You can't be a star athlete and be a star musician at the same time. You have to be one. You may sing as a hobby. You can't have singing as a profession. A number of us play some games, but we are never thinking of becoming a star in the things we play. Because we are, not, we are not eligible. We are having it as a hobby. It takes a professional approach to, have, to become a star. I read 39 biographies to prepare myself for ministry. How many? 39 biographies of proven ministries. Give attention to reading. If you don't want your youth to be despised, if you don't want to lose your place in the race, give attention to reading. In getting Covenant University started, I did an explorative study of a number of proven, long-standing universities like Harvard, like Cambridge, like Oxford, like Yale, like Princeton. I studied them so much that I could tell their story without having to open any paper. And how they developed. And I came out with a verdict. Covenant University is a new generation Harvard. And you can see the wave is causing in only five years. Give attention to reading. Many are too lazy. You are busy playing music every day, watching AIT, watching CNN. That's not how to become a star. A star is committed to information hunting. Explorative studies. Because the information you don't have, you cannot apply. And what is wisdom? Applied knowledge. So the knowledge you have not acquired, how do you apply it? I know there are some of you here that by the time you are 30, 35, you are already named a professor. <laughs> if that is you, let me hear your loudest say amen. <laughs> we got to Kaduna when the church began 24 years ago. And heated the place in five years. The north could not recover from it. In five years, we blew the place open. Five years. I've written to you young men because you are strong. The truth is that certain things you'll be able to do now, a few years from now, you may not be able to do them again. Energy levels diminish with age. So put in the freshness of your strength to your vision. Something will happen. Let me conclude here. If you don't beat our record, you have not succeeded. If you don't beat the records of your parents, you have not succeeded. If you don't beat the record in your field, you have not succeeded. How many can see responsibility now? How many can see responsibility now? What it takes. Bishop David Oyedikpo has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedikpo, 216 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Or call 817-9670, 817-9671, 817-9672, and 817-9674. Or send your testimony through the email bishop at winnerskinandland.org. And best of all, come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Faith Tabernacle, Kinan Land, Kilometer 10, Idiroko Road, Otta. On Wednesday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. On Sundays, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. God bless you.